Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade let's get started let's get started let's uh ramp it up eu au let's check those out i'm actually looking at a uh, eu right here on the 15 minute chart the arrow came well here's your here's your uh rejection from the uh demand zone here's your bounce here's your arrow and now it's going does that mean we can't get in since it's already kind of going? Um, absolutely not. That does not mean that's not what that means. Um, especially with this being on a lower time frame, guys. Right? Let's check the higher time frame to see how much more upside there there potentially could be. Right? Uh, let's see here. So I'm gonna start with this daily. All right, I know these candles are green and stuff like that, but this is an ABC correction as we went over yesterday. So let's let's go take a look at this on TradingView real quick. I already checked for the news this morning, guys. We've got some yellow folders and a 30-year bond auction at uh, one, but we'll be done way before one. So we should be have a smooth morning. Nothing to worry about there. Get you off of there. Let's check out EU. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. This is what we marked up on EU yesterday, where we had one two three four five and now we've got this a b c type of recruit uh well i would put this as a b type correction looking for one more push towards the low and that push towards the low guys is going to be i oh, always switching on me it's going to be um it's going to have a lot of momentum okay it's going to have some big full body bear candles okay and that's to, to entice people to go back short all right if it holds this level right here upon this next push down that's going to give you your prime opportunity to enter now here's what we have here's what i like to see so since this is on the hour time frame okay i'm looking for a bull move all right the next key to sherpa and how i use bag is on my second chart I want it to honestly see, I want to see it trending or looking like it wants to trend in the opposite direction. Okay, so it might psych you out a little bit. And the reason why I want to see my second chart, which is the 15 minute chart, trend in the opposite direction is because we're using one hour structure. Okay. And the one hour structure I'm looking at, first of all, I'm looking at the most recent break of structure. The most recent break of structure comes right here. Okay, so we've got a break of structure. After a break of structure, in order for that structure to be identified as proper support or resistance, now guess what the market has to do? It has to retest that thing to validate it. Okay, so that's why on the second time frame, we wanted to trend in the opposite direction. This trend in the opposite direction is what's going back down to retest this line right here, that break of structure. Okay, it was tested once right here, and boom. There's another time that may come down. It may not even come down that low. But long story short, as long as the second time frame is trending in the opposite direction from the direction we want to go, that's giving you better price entries. So that's how you have, guys have to think about that. Okay. <clears throat> so this is going to give us a better price entry for us to take this take this thing back long, um, following the higher time frame. Okay. So 
Let me find an entry for us real quick. Also, again, guys, there's usually a retracement after three pushes or three drops in one direction. Okay. We got one push, a second push, the third push. All right. That's a small cycle right there. Even on the side, this same push or this same one through five guys runs on every freaking time frame, every single one. So if you're able to identify that, you understand, yo, when to expect a retracement or a pullback, right? When to expect it to, to go in the opposite direction, whether it's a pullback, trend reversal, or, or a full-blown retracement, okay? <clears throat> uh, let's see here. So definitely on EU. This would be A, sideways B, C, pop up, retracement. For it to pop up even higher. That's how I'm looking at this, guys, on EU. Uh, let me check. Let me check something else to confirm. Let's check this dollar index, see what's going on. Well, dollar index is bearish, currently losing strength possibly, which would definitely push EU up, right? That's what we, oh man, what are you doing up there? <laughs> That's what we want to see, okay? So we see the dollar index trending down, which would mean most things going against it should trend in that opposite direction. Here's a retracement for us to get in. Uh, let's just find an opportunity, find a nice spot. I mean, honestly, what time is it? I would probably say at 930 would, would give us a nice opportunity to enter if not this next 15 minute candle. So let's just drop to this five to see what's going on. Here's another break of structure, guys, right? Let me point this out to you. The break of structure rule, the perfect three candle break of structure rule. First candle, second candle, third candle. If it, I would love to see this candle right here have a shorter wick up top, okay? Um, here's another one. So one candle, two candle, the third candle, right? That's what I mean by breaks of structure. I'm paying attention to the size of the candles and where they are closing at in relationship to the structure. The second, this third candle or second candle, depending on which one you use, has a retest of that structure. It's your third or fourth, depending on where you start from. Here's a retracement, A, B, C retracement back to the same zone. That's what we want to see. All right. So once this retracement finishes, that's when we'll actually we'll pop that entry for the long. <clears throat> you guys following that so far? Yep, I'll check out EG. I think I had it long yesterday too. Uh, and it actually went against me, but that's okay. It happens. Uh, let me see here. The break of structure occurred with the lower low after making a higher high? You mean a higher low, Miss Erica? So break the structure right here. Here's, your, here's a low, right? Here's a higher high. Here's a lower high than this. I mean, a higher low than this high. Once that retest comes and completes, 
That's when we'll get in. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. All right, so let's look at EG, and then I'll come back to this here in about 10 minutes or so, see what it's doing. Good. And then I know I had EG going long yesterday. It did for a little second, but then I think it reversed on us. <clears throat> yeah, it did a little bit, then it reversed on us. That's okay. <clears throat> so with EG, here's how I'm playing EG, guys. I'm about to say, I knew I had this thing marked up. All right, so what I need to do is mark up my important price points, right? Give me just a second. Mm -hmm. oh, that's wild. <coughs> so from this shark fin, from this low, we've got this change of momentum that's been holding this level. Uh -oh, off of there. been holding this level on every bear move, right? It's been very limited. <clears throat> so this whole move right here from this high to wherever this current low is, wherever this low is going to create, to me, everything is just a retracement. Nothing is being structured. This is just a consolidation, sideways movement. So we have to identify which side to be with or stand aside at this point. And we do that by analyzing the higher time frames because we want to be on the side of momentum, right? So here's how we do this. You see this low, you see this low, and you see this high. <coughs> Everything from this push down to this low is a consolidation or retracement on the four hour. Okay, understand that. On the four hour, you've got a high, lower high, lower high, lower high. We have to pay attention to that, right? Because even though it's not really breaking structure, it's not going higher at all. Okay. So I would I would call this like a complex type of wedge. Um, let me find a tool for you. Nope. A triangle pattern. That's not it. Wherever it completes that, right? It's just a little wedge pattern. That's all this is to me. Now, here's where I read the price action more than paying attention to, I guess, an indicator or anything like that. We see this, this because this is on the four hour. We see that this bull engulfing was limited, okay? This is not a clean breaker structure on this bull move before this engulfing candle. So because this is not a clean, a clean breaker structure, it's bouncing off a bearish trend line and you have a bearish engulfing, okay? That's sound enough for me to warrant a bearish type of move, okay? Even though on the daily, so I was consolidation and this is the last bull move, this is a high low than this, right? That's fine and dandy. We know that. But if we want to take a trade sooner than later, we're going to go off the, 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 the highest time frame that allows us to take in a trade sooner than later, basically. So uh, we can't use the daily. We know what the daily is doing. Can't use the daily. So we use the four hour. Oh, sorry about that, Josh. Man. <laughs> I wish I could get him shut up. I'll go on the side here in just a second, actually. Um, 
Is that bothering you guys, the birds? <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. Um, this is a simple question. So we can help me connect. Um, I can Tell them, use the bag strategy. We're mainly using the bag strategy. I'm right now just going over some just little uh, price action tips, such as say. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So we've got one push, two push, three, one, two, three, four, five, right? Now we've got this A happening. I'm actually going to enter in short on EG using four hour structure, okay? Oh, cancel that. Wait, what is that? That's wild. All right, so four hour structure, I'm gonna use 30 minute as an entry setup, okay? Now, I'm not going to enter just yet. You're probably like, why? Well, as I mentioned yesterday, I don't really never like to enter whenever I see price at structure because there's typically going to be some type of pullback or retracement, whether it's a, a candle or whether it's a few candles. All right. And also with the timing of the market, with it being almost 930, I want to honestly wait for this candle to close um, because what I should start to see is maybe like a little wick leave at this candle right here, which is per perfectly normal and natural. Um, which would give us that type of uh, correction that we're looking for on this move alone. Because this correction itself is a little bit of a complex one. Okay, well, your wave A has its own one, two, three, B comes against it, and then you've got a steep C. All right. There's there's way more than one, two, three waves in this whole retracement right here, but I'm not I'm just gonna stick to the ABC so that way I don't confuse you guys too much. And then another reason why I expect it to pop up as a retracement. It's almost at my entry zone, which would warrant some type of retracement or pullback to some degree. All right, and then so when it pulls back though. What I'm expecting it or where I'm expecting it to go to is from somewhere to test this right here. It may not even get all the way up there, guys, right? It may not. But to me, that's what I'm expecting. Um, so if I expect that, I could I can react to it once it happens. If it doesn't happen, then guess what? I'm sitting on my hands. Simple as that, right? That's it. Oh, it's definitely relaxing. Um, it rained last night, guys. It's kind of chilly out here, not hot, not humid. Birds just chirping. It's pretty peaceful, honestly. <laughs> no mosquitoes or nothing too much. So here's what we got, guys. We're definitely going to go short on EG, all right? I'm not entering it just yet because it's already in a trend, as you all currently see. If you want to enter right now, that's perfectly fine. Just understand you may get hit with some drawdown. So let me get this out the way, which is perfectly fine, right? There's nothing wrong with a little drawdown, but I like to make money. So here's what I'm going to do. You know what? I'm just going to say the heck with it and enter with you guys. Let's check this out. <laughs> That's wild. Arrow go. Man, I do want to see a retracement though. That's what's crazy. I want to see the retracement. That's just that's just me. Do I feel we can catch 30 pips off of this move, guys? With the retracement? Yes. Um That's wild, man. Hmm. 
Yeah. No, I'm gonna wait till 9 30 to check at this one. So that's what we'll do. We'll wait. All right. So we'll check out what is this, 30 minutes ago, UCHF. When the hour time frame gave us a, ooh, a cell signal. I mean, a cell signal, a cell alert. Look at this. It gave us gave it on this candle. I can see why I gave it on this candle. Cool. Um, UCHF, what's going on with this Swiss franc? This alert isn't playing out too well. So let's go to a higher time frame, see what's going on. Ah, well, it's already reached its demand zone and starting to reverse. So if that's the case, let's do what I like to do. See if this chart, see if we can hop in with it. <laughs> All right. So as you guys see here on the four hour, you already see like it's in my zone and stuff like that. Um, this is something that that's wild. I'd be looking to buy and buy for a really long time. All right. So let's go over this setup, right? Okay. So this line right here is a 75 pip hesitation zone from this key level to right here. That's 75 pips. All right. This is 125 pips, and then this should be the last whole number prior to this next quarter point. Those are all support levels, all right? So what I'm seeing with this right here is that it's stalling, guys, at the same structure point, which is an institutional key level, and also at this low right here. So I'm paying attention to what's going on right here, right? We see this bounce. And then this last bear push of uh, four days, it had no momentum in it, right? See the green bars? That has no bearish momentum or no pressure in it. So now, off of this hammer, today should be damn near all bullish, um, which would give us opportunity to catch some pips long. With this being a fresh nine o'clock candle, guys, I'm actually going to just directly enter with this candle. Because it's got a lot of upside. All right. A heck of a lot of upside. It's not where I'm going to keep my. That is so crazy. <laughs> Super crazy. So the 30 minute gave an actual buy signal about an hour ago, well, almost an hour ago. But the one hour gave the short. That's okay with me. So yeah, I just entered in long on this, guys. Um, I'm not really paying attention too much to the arrow settings on this one, but rather just going off of my own price action. Um, yeah, I bought it, Saeed. Bitcoin dollar. EG sell. <laughs> 30 minute EG sell. Let's go take a look at that. All right, so check it. So here's at 930, right? I said expect to pull back or something right to some degree, which will give us a nice entry opportunity. I'm actually going to enter that cell um, as well. So I'm long USDCHF short EG, all right? Long 
long USDCHF, short EG. So that's what we got so far. Wilding. Wilding, wilding. Okay, let's see. SUCHF, EU, GCHF on the daily is short, really. That was like seven hours ago. Let's check that out. No, I didn't enter EU or anything like that. Um, I entered an EG, E-U-R-G-B-P. All right, so check it. Sell signal came yesterday. It's currently bullish today. Um, so let's see what we can see, find out, right? This is what we wanna see. So from this high to this low, this retracement happened. I'm gonna go to the uh, normal charts. That way we can actually see it. I like to see my colors a little bit differently. All right, check it. What's this? GBP CHF. All right, so this is one that I do not have like marked up or anything like that, right? Notice there's no key levels, there's no nothing. What am I gonna do? Um, let's see here. No. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to mark up my key levels real quick. So this is going to give you guys a, a pretty good opportunity to see how I do my, my key levels and stuff. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So starting out, guys, I always start out on a monthly time frame, and then I'll, I'll start with nice, round, even whole numbers. Um, and the whole premise of behind the quarters theory, I'll, I'll reiterate for you guys just briefly, um, is that price does not move randomly, but it moves very systemically, systematically in between um, 1,000 pip ranges, okay? And I'm going to show you this on the chart so that way you guys can see. And it starts with $1 because it says that's parity in, in Forex, $1. If one British pound is worth $1, one Swiss franc is $1, that's parity, right? So we're gonna start 10 cents above parity at $1.10, where you guys can kind of see where it has actually wicked at, right? Wick, wicking, wicking right dollar 10 10 cents above that is going to be a i mean a thousand pips above that is going to be a dollar 20. all right ten um a thousand pips above that a thousand a thousand thirty dollar <laughs> thirty Ooh, this morning I'm going to do one more at a dollar forty, just to be safe. All right. What? No. All right. So after, from this white line to this white line to a thousand pips and so forth, right? So we've got three zones of a thousand pips. I can drop down to my weekly time frame just to get a little better image. And you guys can see how these candles react to like this level, this level, this level, and so forth, right? And when I break these down with the quarter points, you're gonna see it even in more depth, right? It's pretty crazy, guys. Pretty freaking crazy. This is a midpoint. Look at this. All right, if I scroll back, you'll see it. I keep scrolling back. 
You'll see it, right? Uh, let's see. Now let's do this next one. And I'll go back to the months that way you guys can really see how it's reacting, right? Bingo, bingo, all it is. All it is, guys, right? This is stuff that I'll be bringing to you guys, teaching you all how to do. Hold on real quick. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> so what I'm focused on is from this monthly key level to this monthly key level, all right? I'll split this in half with the quarter point as well. Um, and I'll put this at what? 25, 275. All right, so now I've got my 250 pip zones, right? This is on the daily time frame as well. You all see how this price is rejecting at this institutional quarter point. That's warrant to me that one hit, two hit, three hit, after this third hit, you've got an engulfing with a lower high than this point right here, indicating that it wants to go short. Here's the momentum, bull limited, bear, bull limited, bear, bull limited on that third time, bearish engulfing bull limited create that high that lower high bear so now we have this bull movement below the 50 ema below the um the institutional quarter point we need to find an entry to go short all right so here on the four hour time frame looks very cluttered, very messy, right? Very consolidated, I should say. Um, what do we do? Do we trade it, guys? Do we stand aside? What do we do? Going off the daily, we would go short and follow the momentum, okay? Here's where the MACD will save you and keep you honest and keep you on the right side. So we see the bear move. We see all this consolidation. Who's in real control right here? The bears are still in control. A moving averages are crossed beneath themselves. And this current pink bar right here, well, that just turned red, that's fluttering in between the dark red and the, and the pink. That's where we currently are. I'm going to follow that previous bar with the dark red. And again, it agrees with the bear move on the higher time frame. So, how do I do this, right? If we look from this high to this low, because all of this is just a retracement of this high to this low, right? We can honestly see the five pushes. One, two, three, four, five. Right? That's the five pushes, guys. As long as this current move up does not cross and break this high of four well it doesn't do a break a clean break of structure of the highway four you're still valid for that short situation okay so how would you play this one how would you do it i'm looking for a bigger here's my a b C probably come up, probably somewhere right there. Possibly, that's what I'm expecting. It may not be this wide or anything like that, but with A, you can say maybe like a B or something like that, maybe like a little C or something like that, something to that nature may play out, which will give us that opportunity for a nice prime, short opportunity to hold that thing for probably a day or two. And honestly, with it being, I forgot all about that. So with it being, um, with it being Thursday, this would probably be a move we could look forward to for next week.
You see this bearish move right here? All of this is just a retracement for that bear move, right? And that's on the weekly. So next, this move would honestly, I would say, play out probably more next week. So we enter this on today. Would I hold it over the weekend as an experienced trader? I possibly might. But you guys, I would just say, collect your, collect your pips and get out, honestly. So I'm not entering on EG, I mean, uh, British pound, Swiss franc just yet. It's just this retracement that I need to see happen and finish. So nothing on EG. Ooh, just negative 25 pips on UCHF. I'm not too worried about that. I knew it was going to hit some kind of drawdown. Let's see. Come on. Move out the way. Let's see where else we're at. Um, RTHF just had a buy signal pop up on the 15 minute. Let's check it out. You made the move? Ah, oh, man. I miss EU. Let me, let me check this real quick. Tripping, or oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so here we are on the EU hour time frame. Let me go to trading view. I think that's where I was looking at that, anyway. Check it. You see, oh, it is making its move back up, huh? All right, this is what we want to see. That doesn't mean you all have missed it or anything like that. Like this is perfectly fine to see. That's crazy. So let's let's reevaluate this thing. Let's take a look. Not today, mosquito. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Very strong. <laughs> All right. So here we are, guys, on EU. This is what we drew up uh, yesterday, actually. We have this one, two, three, four, five, and then we should see this ABC retracement, or AB. C retracement. This last heavy push is the C move. All right. As long as that does not break structure, guys, that's your right. Here's the push, as I was telling you guys about, right? They always do a false move that looks like it's the real move to entice people. And as long as this false move doesn't break structure, doesn't do the clean break of structure, first rule, right? And then you see the same momentum hit in the opposite direction. That means that, yo, this was that push to entice people, knock people out who had um, stop losses right here, maybe even right here and over leverage themselves, right? From buying prematurely right here. <laughs> and now they take your account out. So with this being what, 945, Probably enter this. Mm -hmm. On four percent. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> All right. So I'm on the five minute time frame, right? What I'm gonna do is from this high to I mean from this low to wherever this actually no, I see it taking off. I'm gonna enter my buy to deal with some drawdown. That's what I'm going to do. Now this candle guys on the hour, it will range all in between this wick. And honestly with the 10 o'clock candle coming, I still expect it to you know, come down just a little bit more, but I definitely don't believe it's gonna cross this green box or the low of these wicks right here. Um, so I'll just put you right there. <laughs> yeah, man, they want my um my sweet blood. I see we're trying to get these mosquitoes. Okay. If they were, I sprayed that. What is this? It's fucking. It's supposed to be unnatural, but it hurts my lungs. It's strong as hell. Did you cough your head off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get the natural shit. Just get the regular old oh, shit. I know, right? All right, let's see here. That's supposed to be natural, though. Odd CHF daily, 15 minute. It had its short. <laughs> I want to see it go short instead of long with the arrow. Let's take a look at this right here. All right. Oh boy. I want to see this thing go short personally. Um, but looking at it at this light, it may not go short. Okay. <coughs> oh yeah, it's definitely not gonna go short. All right, so here's how I read this. A be really long complex C wave, okay? On the complex C wave, you have its own set of one through five type of little movement um, where you have one, two, three, four, five, okay? This wave five is also its own complex movement of one, two, three, four, five. This wave five is also its own complex wave movement. As long as all that stuff is still aligning, guys, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop that thing long. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Popped up, changed the momentum. If I fib from low to high, you got the ABC retracement. Came back down into my 618886 zone. Almost did a well, actually did 100, but in between the zone, our entry zone is what we want to see, and we can pop it up. Does that mean it's ready for it with this current brown candle? I mean, red candle, absolutely. Let me just clear this up for you. All right, so we see this quote unquote double bottom. You got five up, five down. This is actually a lower high, I mean, a higher low than this. So you get this change of momentum. And this pin bar is what we want to see. Because off of this pin bar, it's telling us that it's rejected again at this uh, higher low. And it actually closed with some momentum to the bull side. This current candle. It just has to do its thing, guys. Okay, it's this current candle. What I am going to say though is that even with this pin bar, it didn't do a clean break of structure anywhere, right? So we would wait for this candle to close to see what is happening, and then just drop to a lower time frame to read the price action. This is that cup and handle again. <laughs> Pretty crazy. 
Did he bite me twice? Holy crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. They got me good, man. Got me good. <laughs> what do you guys feel about RCHF? How you guys feeling? Did you say Sage Conjecture Park Gallery? <laughs> Doesn't EG and EU go the same way? Buy for EG, yeah, buy for EU. It's a good question, uh, Tr uh, Trisha. You would think so, but at the same time, it also depends on what's going on with the United States and what's going on with the British pound. So you would expect those to correlate to some degree, but again, with it being New York session and United States dollar, you could, who knows? Uh, let's see here. It should probably start to stall a little bit, I would expect with all this structure right here. <laughs> my, my, my next resistance level? Oh, okay, that's a good question. So let's, uh, let's just, let's fib. These are my TPs every single time. Notice where TP1 is at though, met with structure. We come over, TP2 is going to be at, well, let me put the line right there. The take profits are usually at some type of previous structure. Met with fib. Over here is a void zone with my second TP. My first TP is met with this level right here. That's a super, super long time. Do you want to hold it that long? You don't have to, but just know that TP1. It's going to get you more than enough pips. That's 70 pips right there, guys. All you need to focus on is half of that, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Dun, dun. So yeah, that's EU. Um, what else are we looking at real quick? Let me see. Go back to arrow. Is anything popping up for arrow? Gosh, bar go away. All right. We had... Thank you. This UCHF sale popped up, I said five minutes ago. I think we had it, what, what did we do? Oh, uh, we did go long. I said we were gonna deal with some job down, didn't I? Uh, it took us out. It took us out. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Ah, come on. So let's look at this and let's see if we can get an entry then. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So these wicks right here, guys, killing me, Smalls, killing me. I want to look at this on a real chart real quick. Let's see what can we see that's going on. This is wild. 
well. I will say this. The natural gas, even though it was a yellow folder, it's coming out at 10.30. I feel it should give us some, some momentum. Only because these wicks right here is showing you, especially if this doesn't break the structure, where the price wants to go. And then this would be that last enticement to get you to go short. But I'm going to stay away from it for a little second until it figure out what it, what it wants to do. That is so crazy to me. But notice though, no wick at the top of this candle. It probably has some more bear, some more downside to it if it doesn't pull back. So we're going to stay away from that one for right now. You are GBP. Yep, sure can. I am doing the funding talent, uh, the funding talent challenge. Yes, I'm actually the one who, um, I'm actually one who has a pretty nice idea surrounding like prop firms and stuff like that, along with Arrow. So we've got some stuff coming out to help people with that. <clears throat> Hey, hey, hey. Instagram, I'll type it in the chat for you one real quick and then uh, we'll get on this EG. All right, so here we are on EG. EG still has a short side to it on the four hour. I would love to see it continuous long on the daily. So, but we're going to use a four hour. Okay. So here's how we evaluate this though, guys. So we see this engulfing and we see this move. We want to see breaks of structure whenever there's a consolidation and we feel like there's going to be a trend or anything like that, guys, we want to see breaks of structure. All right, this and break of structure is like this yellow line, how this engulfing broke this structure, right? So I'm looking for like my three candle break of structure. I just got to drop down. I see it's break, second candle right here, right? It's just not good enough for me to warrant a short. It just really isn't. I would want to take it, but it's just not. Let's do this. Ding, 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 ding. I'm going to draw two sets of trend lines on this. That way you guys can see this. There's a space. This space right here, <coughs> I'm actually learning about it from somebody, okay? Um, I forget what they called. I just started learning about it last week. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like, how can I explain it? It's kind of like a slanted supply or demand zone to keep it in like lamest terms, <laughs> all right? So when price is inside this zone, and it's respecting this zone, if it gets inside it and starts to consolidate and trend up, it's going to continue its bearish move, okay? If it gets inside this zone with just a couple candles and you still see it wicking towards this low, but not necessarily trending up, that's going to reverse, all right? Now, of course, like I said, nothing in force is ever 100%, but from what I have noticed, it's a... It's, uh, it's been pretty cool, man. Yes, Miss Sheila. Oh, I just tried to explain this to you. This is something I got turned on to, like I said, like last week. 
<laughs> it's a he calls it a slanted supplier demand zone depending on what side it's on this would be a slanted demand zone up top will be a uh, slanted supply zone <clears throat> he uses two because people when they draw their trend lines there's mixed reviews about whether to go off the bodies of candles themselves or whether to go off the wick i personally i always go off the wick because price didn't it did indeed paint something whether it closed down there no but it did paint and come down there that's why it's a wick right so i personally use the wicks um but he said or he rec recommended me to start using both of them and create that zone so that way you it gives you a more dynamic view of it, I should say, of, of this trend line. Because let's say, had you looked at this trend line right here, right? And that's all you saw. Most people without their green candle, most people will say, okay, cool, engulfing candle, let's go short. Boom, pops you, right? Look how it acts at that top line. That's perfect, right? This is perfect. It's only when you have this wick to the low side where things get screwy. And that's why he said draw that other line as well for this right there. So hopefully that gives you an explanation is why I drew two of them. <laughs> yep. One candle to candle, one wick to wick. There you go. Creates that dynamic zone for you. Now, here's what I do want to see, though, on EG, guys. Because I do want to see a pullback. You're very welcome. Here's even a better look at it, right? So, with this being on the 30-minute, here's how I play this. If this current 30-minute at 10.30 closes as a higher low, I'm going to wait for that next 30 minute candle to be at least halfway done. So that means we can go to the 15 minute and read the price action of this move right here in order to pop it back long. Um, I just want to get this. This consolidation is just eating me right now, though. These are one of those, this is one of those moments where I sit on my hands more times than not until something becomes clear. We don't force it. We never want to force it. Especially in the consolidation. So I'm going to wait off on EG. Yeah, USCCHF Saeed was close. I had my stop loss. What particular charts do you guys want to look at? Anything you guys have in mind, have your eyes set on? GJ? All right, let's check out GJ. If you guys see anything or want me to look at anything, just go ahead and type in the chat for me, and then uh, I'll look at it. Well, that's definitely not it. <laughs> All right, start with my daily. See what's going on. Um, ABC retracement start out at our institutional level, right? With support, with a uh, structure. Now it's boom, reversing. Go to the four hour. I see, I see. Engulfing. Right engulfing current four hour candle is right there where we are currently at so let's see what the one hour is doing we want to take a trade sooner than later right <laughs> excuse me so how do we identify from this low to this current high the most recent breaker structure right well it's kind of already marked for us um 
right here with this blue line. But some people will even use this structure right here. Because this is still one, two, or one our third candle. So to read this, we can drop to the 15 minute time frame. Breaker structure, another breaker structure. So I would at least expect a retracement from this low to this high, somewhere to a certain degree. The reason why I'm using this low, well, let me go to this low. The reason why I'm using this low over this low <clears throat> and over this low is because this is its own move in itself on a lower time frame. We're on a lower time frame. So I want to see the retracement to this move so that way I can get in sooner than later. So we got light, coin, gold, Bitcoin, and CAD. Oh, my man, Looney. What's going on, Looney? <laughs> I can go over that for you, Kevin. Definitely. I'll go over USDCHF for us as well as why is it hit my stop loss. <clears throat> but for now, I think I'm going to, after this retrace, pop this thing long with a pending order. I'm going to put a pending order, guys, at this blue line. 154.8 even is the one I'm put a pending order for a buy. It's a, a buy limit. And I'll just let price activate it. So let's check this. Buy limit. TP. Keep it just like that. This would be almost a 70 point, a 70 pip move, risking 30. That's fire. <laughs> so that's what I got for DJ. Um, I'll come back to it, but let's, let's see CHF. Let's reanalyze CHF real quick. All right, what did I miss? What did I miss? Did I miss something or is it just doing what it's doing? Probably missed something. Or maybe a day early. So check it. This is indeed a hammer. This two candle formation though, if today, if today was closed like that, that's a continuation pattern for the short. But of course, today's not closed yet, though. So. We honestly have to wait for this candle currently to do what it's doing because there's no way for me to really gather, I guess, why it came all the way up here. It did what it should have done what we thought it was going to do, but it just pinned back. There's no real reason for us to, I guess, gather or understand besides maybe there was some equity down here that they wanted to go grab, especially if it gets the hell up out of there. But notice, though, it is holding the level. So here's the candle engulfing that broke the structure. We test to it. 
Let's go to a lower time frame so we can see. One, two, three candle breaking structure, right? Hasn't been a retest to it until all of this. Even on this big bear move, right? It didn't break any structure. Does that mean that it's going to bounce and go back up? Only dependent upon the next few candles or this current candle getting back into this zone. And the zone I'm talking about is right here. And if it does that, what this is called right here, this move up and then this quick move down and then it goes back up, that's called a whipsaw. Um, brokers will do this to clear the boards, all right? And the reason why they do that is if we look at this long consolidation right here, right? You've got people who went short right here, who have their stop loss right here, right? Or even up here, have their stop loss. Who see this consolidation and enter in short multiple times and put their stop loss up here. So guess what they do? They'll go take that from you, okay? That's the first move, right? That's the first move. Here's the second part of that move. You got people who went long right here, who have their stop losses either down here or somewhere right here. Okay, you see this consolidation. And then they go long again, right? More stop loss right here. Guess what happens? Oh, come on, scoot over. They take you out. That's a whipsaw. That's a, that's a move that we have no control over and no way of even preparing for anything like that, guys, honestly. That's the only... What in the world is going on with my computer? All right. Yeah, I don't know what it's doing. All right, so that's the only feasible reason I have for that current move to, to play out how it did, which is a common whipsaw. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. On GJ market makers. Yep. Yeah, man, they they do that, bro. Like, especially after this long consolidation, all kind of money is up above it and below it. They want that money. And then on GJ, the buy limit CPI news is that in 15 minutes. Yep. And then we'll take a look at those four. Let me refresh this. It was acting real crazy. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on real quick, guys. Let me see what's going on. I might have to Shut my browser down and open it back up. Oh, that's always good to see. funny whoa where'd my people go share desktop all right here we go all right back again <coughs> excuse me so oh yeah cat that's the only thing that I can chalk that up, guys, is this common whipsaw. Um, CPI news is in 15 minutes, which would produce some stuff, I would believe, on something. U.S. East Swiss franc is continuing its bear move for now, especially after all this bull 
this bull momentum right here was taken back. Yeah, it's going to continue its bear momentum. UCHF is. <laughs> Yeah, things are wild today, Miguel. I do agree. But hey, it happens. But UCHF, I have it continue its bear move after this bull. Both of these bull moves were limited heavily. So let's keep that in mind. And then on GBP, JPY. <laughs> Excuse me. A buy limit, not a buy stop. It was a buy limit on 154.8. Or you can do a buy stop up here. Now we got to look at Litecoin. Yeah. Um, Litecoin, gold, Bitcoin, and CAD. We'll use our data feed. All right. So check it. Litecoin is looking kind of bullish after this setup completes. So how I'm reading this is it pushed towards the low. This wick right here is the low. That's the structure. All right. That's the structure, the wick. We go to the four hour, we can see what's going on because this engulfing pushed off the move. Here's the ABC retracement to from this low to this high. All right. Uh, four hour. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, this blue line is the low or the structure that we don't want price to pass. If it goes beyond that, more than likely it's going to continue a short type of situation. What it's currently doing is a consolidation. So this move right here will probably pop down to this structure. We'll just keep dropping down so that way we can find it. Excuse me. Probably somewhere different when I refresh. That's well. All right. So since this structure right here has been broken, we can let this retracement happen to come as low as low as it wants to. Um, pull out my fibs. I'll fib that whole move. So that way I can see what is going on. So, but for right now, here's what I do see. And then probably go somewhere up here. Okay. So what you have right here is the steep wave two, uh, wave three, kind of more of a sideways consolidation wave four. And then wave five will pop up. Wave five is going to be symmetrical to either wave three or wave one. Okay. So to kind of confirm again where this wave five will go to or could go to, there's a couple of different things you can do. It's honestly just repeating the same process. And I'm, oh, I'm dropping some secrets for you guys right now, honestly. That's crazy. So if you did do, let's say, that move right there, right? I would expect wave five to be similar in price movement, like wave one, more than wave three. 
And is it going to move like this? Probably not. It may do its own. It may do its own five type of steps, be a complex five mover type of wave. But I definitely have it going bullish. It's just waiting for the setup to happen. Okay. So yeah, it's doing bear right now, which is perfectly fine. That's what we want to see. It's going to give us a better price entry, right? Now we want to see this bear move. Just find a support at structure, which is coming right here at either this 382 or at this 382. All right. But as long as it definitely doesn't cross this bottom blue line, I would say you're still good for the long situation. There is a void right here in this big old engulfing candle that I'm not going to cover what a void is or anything like that, but there's definitely a void right there um, where I can see price coming down to grab some equity and then popping back up. So let me just. You got a haircut. Coming too. It's just great. It would have been <laughs> All right, great. All right, so hopefully that helps you with Litecoin. Did you follow that, Miss Jasmine? Oh, sorry. I know, man, it's been a brutal. Brutal day. Um, it happens, bro. It happens. Don't let it mess with you, though. I'm going to try to get you some money. Don't worry about it. So let's look at gold and then Bitcoin and then Looney. All right. So similar to what the um well i'm not gonna say similar that's crazy <laughs> well kind of similar to what i was looking at on lt on uh on the litecoin with that blue line with it still having that bear movement this is what i would expect it to happen on litecoin if that makes sense right so just jack this is going to jasmine so just keep that in mind something like this right you see how like how the bear Bears movement has been limited, right? But then they did that final push and another final push that didn't break the structure. These last two heavy moves, pushes that don't break structure is what you want to pay attention to. When y'all see that, guys, like a heavy push like that, that doesn't break structure. I mean, that's telling you that, hey, you might want to either get out of that or look to get into that, all right? Now we got this big ass engulfing, excuse my language. And then we've got this spinning top and another. Oh man, I'm super, super bullish on this thing. Holy crap. Yeah, I'm gonna enter on this bull run actually right now. <laughs> Excuse me. Four hour structure definitely looks long. All right, so here's where I'm going to use Sherpa a little bit more. So on Sherpa, my structure chart is going to be the four hour. I use the MACD with my structure chart, okay? The MACD goes along with momentum, um, telling you what who's in control, right? We see this bounce, and now this bounce because it's engulfing off of the structure. This low is at this low. This is a higher low. This is another higher low, okay? This is, <clears throat> excuse me. That's telling you to buy, all right? So I'm definitely gonna go long on gold, guys, right now.
All right. Hopefully you guys entered. Um, I had to do that account. Let's do this account. Uh, with arrow. Oh man, wrong spot, wrong spot. I'll just keep arrow on it because I like the how it counts the tips for you, right? <clears throat> but definitely went long on gold um, based off of price action. <laughs> oh man <laughs> is that really an emoji about apple know, to... that's hilarious come on bar get away there we go all right drop you down i'm back to trading view <laughs> Haven't looked at AU. Arrow showing resistance on minute five. Is that for the gold, Michael? I didn't. I just looked at that. Um, is the 382 generally a common retrace point for gold? You know, honestly. I can't tell you a yes or no on that one. It kind of just depends on the cycle itself. Um, I do know that, I will say gold does favor a shallow type of retracement. So nothing more, I would say nothing more than like a 618 type of thing, um, but it can actually go deeper, but. What sound are you talking about, Nani? Oh, went long. What do we do else? Bitcoin and CAD. There you go. All right. So let me see. Long on go. We'll check out Bitcoin, the CAD, and the United States dollar with the Mexican peso. All right. <coughs> What is this, Bitcoin? Okay. Let's see if I can kill Bitcoin though. These levels, um, especially up here, have is what helped me murder Bitcoin at the beginning of the year, honestly. Yeah, it's a tweeting bird, man. I'm outside. <laughs> I've got, I think the crypto universe is really trying to go bullish. It really wants to go bullish, but it's, it's, Waiting on a catalyst. I don't know what that catalyst is yet, though. I'm going to have to do some research. I'm going to have to ask my man, D. Duncan. But I feel like it wants to do some bullish moves, especially with a few of the countries actually recognizing Bitcoin as legal tender now, right? Like, that's big news. Um, Ecuador, I believe, was the first, or El Salvador, I believe, was the first one to do it. Um, and there's, like, two or three other Central America countries that are going to do it. And then I do know that if Venezuela do it, does it, that's going to be huge for their economy as well, because like their money is worth pennies pretty much right now. And, and it's a lot around the crypto space that is going to benefit the smaller countries if they adopt it early on. So I believe that's really going to be the catalyst, which is going to push a lot of cryptos bullish. It just depends on my, depends on when now when do we get in right um this is a long consolidation sideways movement it's just bouncing in between 30 uh, and forty thousand dollars right now i don't want to personally enter in on this four hour candle but if i drop down to the 30 minutes i can read price action to see what's actually going on and so what I see, the A, B, 
Uh, I'm not an ABC. All right. So you're probably like, why did I draw three all the way from this low to this high and not use this high, right? I could have used this high. Actually, that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Now that I'm, this is something I got to show you guys. So an Elliott wave, you all see how this tool only goes one through five. In the PDF that I released to you guys, it tells you that sometimes it does do a sixth or seventh wave, right? This tool does not allow me to put this sixth and seventh wave, all right? So because it, that's in, indeed what this is, is wave one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, before a deeper type of A, B, some type of C retracement, all right? Um, how do I recognize this as wave three? Sideways, bow, bow. Before this ABC retracement, before waves five, before this ABC retracement of wave six and then wave seven. Bitcoin should never reach 20,000 again. Honestly, if it does, I would be heavily surprised. And I say that with confidence based off of this structure right here. If it gets below this, oh man, things are, are bad, bad, bad. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know. If it gets below 30,000, things are bad, bad, bad for Bitcoin, okay? <coughs> Um, Marvin, let me, actually, I think I might be able to release that PDF right here. Let me see real quick. Give me just a second, guys. Hold on. Just a second. I got a plug in my laptop. I don't want to die on you guys, so hold on. Sorry about that. All right, we're good, we're good. Still here? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload this. I'm gonna upload the Elliott Wave PDF for you guys. Um, give me just a second. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, please just go ahead and type them in the chat for me.
Bingo. All right. Coming at you in five, four, three, two, one. Bingo. That is the Google Drive link to a Elliott Wave PDF book. It's the same PDF book that I've been studying. Um, you can read through it, bro. You're going to have to study it. Um, I will do you something even better, though, honestly, guys. Let me do this for you. I'll be super generous. Super, super generous. And... drop something even better to help you understand how I do it. Boom. So I dropped the PDF guys for you on Elliott Wave. I just dropped my personal training for you on Elliott Wave on YouTube. It's a video. That video is two hours long, guys. All right. Hey, there you go. No doubt, no doubt. Um, let me see. Okay. Let me take a look at gold again, and then uh, we'll get back on these charts. But yeah, so save that YouTube link, download that PDF. Those should help get you guys' understanding the market cycle that I personally use. Um, and that's, Elliott Wave guys has been around for decades, right? It's not something that you guys are going to pick up overnight. I'm going to warn you, okay? Stick to the basics. Pick out one or two guidelines that you want to hone in on first and then go with it. I honestly, personally prefer that you guys just watch the YouTube link that I sent you on it and then get into the book first. Um, and then, I mean, I'm sorry, and then get into the book second. But definitely check it out, though, okay? Please, please, please. All right. No. Let's get back to these charts. very welcome yeah this is my whole training right now so far so it's a few different <laughs> a few different days all of it's real long all righty let's do here <laughs> let's get this off of here so understand that bitcoin should enter a retracement or a pullback to a degree, which is gonna give you a, a nice opportunity to go long. It's just not in it for me to go long just yet. All right. Let's look at gold again. <laughs> he said there was five minute resistance, which I believe it. Um, it's perfectly fine to me, five minute resistance is a weak type of structure to me in comparison to one hour moves um, and one hour structure. So that's not to say it's invalid or anything like that. That just means I'm looking at the one hour and the four hour and, and it, I'm looking for the bigger move for the bigger picture of everything, right? So you may have some drawdown right now, which is perfectly fine, but I ultimately still, this is gonna pop up. Um, if you're a scalper, then yeah, you could probably see gold retrace a little bit to probably their 50 EMA or top of the structure. Um, but outside of that, with all this bull momentum, that's taken back all of this. I mean, just, just look at the comparison for a second. This is where I need to get you guys this on price action. Look at the comparison, okay? So here is the bear move, right? And look at how exhausted it is, first and foremost, right? Even on these last two heavy pushes, they were heavily, heavily exhausted, right? Never broke this structure before finally, one, two, a three candle break of this structure. Okay, one, two, three, all that's a break of structure. 
So you can honestly, like I said, see a retracement come down, which is perfectly fine. It's perfectly natural and normal. You can honestly see it even come deeper if it wanted to. As long as this bottom line stands still, you're still in it because your stop loss is below it just slightly. <coughs> um, but yeah, so that five minute structure or that five minute, uh, yeah, the five minute structure that you're seeing is just from right here. It's USDCHS starting to push up. Oh man. <laughs> the whip sauce, the whip sauce. Let's check it out real quick. Bro, you can't be serious. You cannot be serious. <laughs> You cannot be seen. So look, guys, there's no absolutely, there's no way for us. Oh, hold on. That's on cracking. I'm like, what is that? That's not even the right one. Sorry about that. Whew. I was like, what in the world? I, whew, I'm glad I caught that. So yeah, look at this. There's no way for us to even prepare for this, guys. Absolutely no way. Heavy push, even though it's engulfing, it's not a clean break of structure for real for real just to clean the board collect y'all's equity <laughs> and then make a move yeah there's no way for us to pre pre uh, prepare for that that is wild yeah in a second <sighs> you think so miguel i'm gonna go check it bro Let's definitely go check it because that's wild to me. Eh, it said sell. It gave us a sell, I think, on the one hour a little bit ago. It gave us a short on the 15 minute a little bit, a while ago, all kinds of stuff. Like it did give us some alerts. Don't get me wrong. But when it whips off, there's just no way for us to prepare for it, bro. I promise you. That's wild. Wild as ever. And what diseases pop up? In you. Let's check that out real quick. Yes, please. Not what I hear. Boom. All right. Let's go. All right, so on the one hour, it gave us a buy alert on this right here, right? And would I get into this? Definitely. Um, let's check this out. So it gave us a buy alert on the one and the 15. Appreciate you. And this retracement that is in, honestly, may give us another a better opportunity than the arrow. So let's go check this out on Trading View, and then I'll check out UCAT from my man Looney. Definitely. So let's check out what is that? NZD USD. On Oanda, check out my four hours. All right, so what I would like to do is rush. Well, no, not even rush through. It's been kind of marked up for a minute. Holy crap. Let's just do this. All right. 
Who child. Here's how I'm looking at this, guys. I'm trying to find my structure, all right? That's what I have to find. So I see all this bull momentum and then a heavy change, right? A heavy change. To me, from this point to all this over here, it's just a corrective double top with a three drop pattern. I think I went over this a little bit the other day. One, two, three, and it should reverse. Um, so this A, B type of C retracement, we have to find an opportunity to enter in this, enter in this little C portion of the A, B, C, right? Where it's looking something like this. So I see where arrow says long on this arrow because it follows my rules. That setup follows my whole rule, guys. And then where I ride it to, though, is to my take profits, especially my second one. All right, so check this out. I always mention there are cycles within cycles, right? Um, if, if you all have ever been on my training, there's cycles within cycles. So even though this is an A, B, C retracement, there's still its own cycle of an A, B, C retracement. All righty, where you've got Excuse me. So this is from this low to this high is going to have its own five waves up. ABC retracement. Now we're waiting for C to pop up, right? Arrow gave us the buy. We're waiting for C to pop up. So we're focused on this section right here since we're on the four hours. So, so from that portion, I'm going to go to the, from the four hour, I dropped to the 30 minute. So that way I can read the price action of this portion. Okay. Now notice there's no clean break of structure right here. Let me see if I can get that off of there. There's no clean break of structure. All right. None in the slightest. You've got one engulfing. It came back up a second engulfing. If it closes like that, we would honestly have to wait till the 11 o'clock candle because like it could do what it's doing, come down, pull back. And then at 11 o'clock candle come from 11 to 1130, it's still paint bearish, right? And then it'll pop back up maybe around 1230 or so. Who knows really? <clears throat> but long story short, I'm definitely on the long side of it. We have to wait for the price and the action itself to present itself for us to react. If we're gonna market execute, or you can set your pending orders. So what I wanna to highlight to you guys is the structure that I'm pretty much looking at for this portion right here to retrace to. Not gonna enter it just yet though. This gives you guys something to watch for later, I should say. Scalping goal is the EMA of better moving average is versus. I've always preferred EMAs over SMAs. So if that helps you out, <coughs> excuse me. Oh boy, you see everybody's calling me. <laughs> All right, is there anything else you guys want to look at? Has it been too adventurous for us today? Honestly, screwy week. We're down a little bit on gold. Well, that's okay. EU is not going anywhere. <laughs> it's just teetering. Um, I don't think gold's going to go too far down. 
Where's my dashboard? Where's my dashboard? I'm gonna go away. What else is on here? I said you catch short. Really? That's what I gotta look at. You catch from a man looney. I almost forgot about you, bro. This is where the market's ugly. It's just an ugly market, guys. There's a catalyst waiting to happen. Most things we have looked at were in some type of super extended consolidation, right? Is it scalping season? <laughs> All right, so here's the arrow short bounce off of this. It came very close to our uh, demand zone, but no cigar, right? Before this huge pin bar. What do we do? Let's check out the four hours, see what's going on. Hmm. Let's go. I think I may have it marked up. Well, here we go. This would be perfect. All right. So let's see here. What structure chart am I going to use? My structure, guys, always comes from either the daily, the four hour, or the one hour time frames um, because those set the tone for the type of trade that I'm speculating. And guys, give me like five minutes real quick. Well, not five minutes, give me two minutes real quick. Hold on. I'm back. Sorry about that. All right. So as I was saying, guys, my structure always comes from the four hour daily or the one hour time frames. Um, yeah, entire week has been off. And I still have to use it. Look at that Mexican dollar for the year. We got you. Um, and honestly, guys, it's we're just in the consolidation. Like, look, most things we have looked at were honestly in some type of consolidation, which at that point, I usually tell people, you know, sit aside or this could be like a scalper's dream. If you just scout from the high to the lows, right? But I want to make some money. I don't want to force it too much, but I want to make some money. So what I'm going to do is look for a short-term scout type of position type of trade, right? So here's what I'm looking at. One hour is going to be my structure chart. I'm going to use this MACD. MACD is in agreement that this should be a long type of situation. So my next time frame comes from the 15 minute. All right. Feel from high to low. See where this retracement came to. ABC retracement. I'll draw it for you guys. Uh, where are we at? ABC retracement. It hits into my same zone in between the 618 and the 886. It actually hits the sweet money spot of the 786 right on and it pings you back up, right? That's what we want to see on the structure chart. Here is the entry setup chart though, right? The entry setup chart. So we see that it already has this bull, bull run, but on this time frame, it is at its own type of structure situation that it's going to respect, okay, on this time frame. So what I mean by that is it's hitting these lows right here, this structure which is going to give it two things are going to happen. Okay. It's either going to, this current candle is either going to close up slightly up above it, or it's going to do what it's currently doing P 
pin to it give us a retracement all right whichever it does it's going to do either a single candle pullback at at least to this structure right here maybe even pin down below it before going before continuing back up basically so this is the second time frame the entry setup on the entry setup time frame we do the same thing guys we fib from low to wherever this high is going to be created to wherever a first bear candle is created i should say right we'll anchor it let's say if we did it right there we would anchor it and then we would drop down to our price action entry of either the five or the one minute time frame so since this is a bear candle hopefully this does close kind of bearish honestly i would love to see it bearish i would be looking for a three candle break of structure from this low to wherever this high is all right you could either use your 50 moving average or you can use this structure right here either way we still want to see a pullback or retracement to some degree um, again same sweet spot it's just narrowed down all right it may not even come down there it may just hit the 382 and if it definitely hits the 382 uh, i mentioned yesterday that after that retracement it's a heavy move away from it it's a heavy move out of it i mean right so even if you did take this off the five minute and ride it up there as a scout that's crazy as a scout guys and you put your stop loss even right there it's a two and a half to one reward to risk ratio you're going to risk almost 14 pips to gain about 35. so that's what i got on ucad for you looney Yes, yes. Hold on, let me see. What does it mean if all of a sudden, what does it mean if arrow on a chart? What does it mean? <laughs> I'm reading this all the way wrong. Hold on. What does it mean when a arrow chart, when on an arrow chart, the block of color expands? Oh, you mean like get gets wider? Ms. Sheila? yeah um it just depends on that structure that just may be a wider structure so you know how i drew those two those two trend lines right that dynamic type of zone that's um what those those same zones are going to do the same thing. So those two trend line zones, they're just going to get wider depending on the type of candle structure that it's going off of. You'll see some of them smaller. You'll see some of them wider. Also, it's going to depend on the time frame as well. I have noticed that the higher time frames have a little bit wider ones, whereas you get to the lower time frames, they're kind of kind of narrow. The green blood explained it. I know that's right. No problem, Mr. Looney. Um, and Ricky, my MACD settings are default. And which MACD am I using? I'm actually just using the normal, um, the normal one. Let me see. Indicators, MACD, this one right here. Which, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it showed us bullish on UCHF, and I actually had took it. I mean, it showed us sell on on UCHF. Bye, it was nice to meet you. Yeah, it showed us uh, short on the uh, arrow UCHF, which I, after doing an analysis, I actually had it going long as well, but it, it whipsawed us. So it's definitely going to still probably go bullish. I'll take a little look at that for you as well. After I take a look at the Mexican. Let's see here. Uh, 
Uh oh. What the, what chart did I just get off of? That looked very freaking similar. You had. <laughs> I think that's what it was. You can probably expect similar things as you had. But let's analyze it. See, it's bottoming out, man. See, all, everything has been this consolidation, bro. This real weird consolidation. I think it wants to pop up long myself personally, which is going to follow the CAD. Um, oh, yeah, definitely be on the long side with this. Follow the momentum. So let's just keep dropping down. Probably use the hour time frame again. Definitely. So after this pin bar right here, this is a retest to this low and it pulls back, which is what we want to see. I'm actually going to enter in logs on this and CAD. So give me a second. Mm. Let me check this out. What is this from Mexican? I ain't even got that on my team. Mexican peso. I think the Mexican peso pays out weird, if I'm not mistaken. Or it might be something else I'm thinking about. All right. <laughs> so let's go over this. I'm on my Mexican peso chart that I'm getting ready to enter on. So we're going to use, this is going to be a short term type of scout type of play for right now. All right. So we're going to use this as a sideways, a, well, a very complex type of A, B, C retracement right here. Right. I'm not going to get into it. I'm going to drop down because this is my structure chart. So let me do this properly for you guys. That is where I really want to enter if I was to properly enter, but we're going to enter in late. This is where stop loss should go to protect our account. TP should go way up there. Okay, so keep this in mind. I've got three areas of where I predict price could or should reach. This is where I expect price to reach, where I take profit. This is where I really want to enter. Um, somewhere in between this high and this low is where I want to enter. This is where my current stop loss is at, below the lowest low, right? So when I drop down to the 15 minute time frame, I can, there we go. Boom, there we go. I can kind of see and do some stuff, right? So where do I want to enter at? We see it had, had the double bottom off the 618 engulfing and it pushes up. We can honestly fib again from this low to this current candle to get um, an idea of where, you know, this current pullback is or could be traced to, because let's be honest, it's that structure, right? We expect at least a single candle pullback, or at least I do. Um, same thing with CAD too. Still expect a single candle pullback or so, right? For us to get in at a better price entry than just entering blindly right now. So drop down to a five minute chart and we can really begin to read the price action. And we see pin, pins to the high, pins to the low. It's not really going anywhere. So at probably 11.10, so probably at like 11.10, um, or 11.15, I'd be popping this entry for the long if I don't do it right now. Because what I'm noticing is, even though this is the low, guys, the wick of this is the low. Even though this pin to the high, look where this closed at. This is indeed a higher low than this. 
So therefore, I feel confident enough that I could enter here probably after this candle closes, as long as I see this, this bull momentum. That's how you read price action, or that's how I read price action. And it's probably going to play out similarly to the uh, the Looney as well. The U, the UCAD, I'm sorry, Mr. Looney. <laughs> yeah, 50 cent per pips. Yep, it does follow the UCAD, but not to a T. All right. Um, let's see. What Max D are you using? Mexican? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's look at US 30 guys, and then we will call it quits. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let me see here. Uh, U30. Let's get this in dice bad boy in here. I don't even know if I have it on here. Yep. Boop. Start with my daily. Let's see what's going on. You know what? That's fire. Get that off of there. It's not even getting that high. I think we marked this up the other day where I wanted to see from here it come up a little bit higher which it came up high, don't get me wrong. And we were expecting it to come up here at, at least, but it didn't, and sometimes that happens. I am going to point out the structure that it bottomed or topped out at. This engulfing candle, guys, has a void right here above it, but this structure, bingo, bingo, bingo. Now, if you didn't have that line there, you're not gonna see that, right? But price action sells you, no wick at the tops, Plus this big old Marabozu candle, which is the strongest. A Marabozu, guys, you have to understand, a Marabozu candle is stronger than an engulfing candle. Okay? If you see one of those, absolutely lutely take that trade. Okay? Like 100% of the time, take that trade. So here, again, you have this structure right here that this Marabozu broke through. A retest to it with this wick. I would say be on the short side. For right now, be on the short side. Let's go to the hour to see if we can find something worthwhile. Mm -hmm. All right, so y'all see this engulfing. Okay, this is a heavy move, but it didn't break the structure. It actually pinned to it. This candle right here is going to tell you guys what it wants to do. If this bull move is limited, and doesn't get back above this 50 EMA, you'll, you'll still have some more short side to it. And as we can kind of see in comparison, it really is limited, right? So let this one close or watch it on a lower time frame like the 15 and begin to read the price action. And then uh, you should be able to pop it and follow either the four hour or the one hour and really hold it. So I will say, just be mindful of this four hour, of this structure right here. On the four hour, okay? One hour is actually exactly where it's sitting at. So like I said, if this candle does not gain the traction to get up above this 50 moving average, you should see what is called the perfect three candle breaker structure, which you have this candle, a second candle and the third candle will be a nice full body bear going down. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Last question. Let's see, like a, I'm not a master at it. I just know uh, I, I'm not a master at it, man. I'm still studying that stuff. I've been studying it for years. <laughs> What's your thoughts on the market makers dealers trend and Elliott Wave? I think they are the same or no? Do you use both? Do you think Elliott Wave is? So check this out though. So the market makers method and is something that I learned like in my earlier years of trading, like back in 2013 type of thing. 
like I got it from Steve Morrow and stuff like that. Yeah, so I got it from like Steve Morrow and stuff like that, but it was, it's a, the way he explains it is kind of weird. Okay, I'm, it's kind of, he kind of makes it too difficult to where if you just went and learned from Inner Circle Trader, which I feel like a lot of the teachings come from, you would understand a little bit better. Um, Inner Circle Trader or Michael J. Huddleston, he's pretty good. I, I've went through all of his stuff as well. And I actually implement his timing in like uh, in my Sherpa strategy as far as like my set and forget. Um, if I find this video, I can, I'll can i share it to you guys as well. And just give me a few days on that one. But as far as deciding between the two, I'm, I'm with Elliott Wave all day, every day. So hopefully that answers you. Um, I can't really give you a stop loss for gold. Um, I think the recommendation with arrow was like 40 pips though, but I typically use a stop loss calculation. I would do 20 or so, 20 to 30. Um, if you are over leveraged, um, or you can just stick to the normal 40. <laughs> Complete the collection, S and P and knives. Let's see. I'll do it real quick for you, bro, bro. Oh, that's my volatility. All right, so check it. No clean break of structure whatsoever. It broke it, but look immediately engulfed and came back so this candle right here should really come up and probably do like a retest of that structure if it doesn't get back above it then yeah you'll still have some short side kind of like the uh u30 same kind of ordeal it's gotta it's gotta get that traction to get back above it but with it not really having a clean breaking structure on this hour time frame which is my structure chart. Keep that in mind. I don't see I don't see it really doing nothing. Engulfing. Look at this candle right here. So you see how this has no wick at the bottom, and then this one has no wick at the top. That's a structure point. So I could honestly move it to to that to where it's a little bit better. Just got to see it gain some traction. Um, I'm not too sure if, if you guys are familiar with like the timing behind the market. Um, usually around noon or something like that in the New York session, the market will kind of like die down for mo more times than not. And most of the moves and the setups are usually completed by that time. So if this is going to be a bull run or if it's going to be a bull move, it's got to happen fairly soon. definitely got to happen fairly soon. I just don't see it gaining any traction just yet. chat one more time please yep bingo <laughs> that whipsaw cleared the board guys and more people probably just called it a day honestly it's pretty crazy like i said man when there's like when there's an extended consolidation guys there's more times than not i would expect a, a whipsaw only because there's I look at it from the viewpoint of liquidity pools. Um, and to help you guys, like, I guess, 
understand liquidity, you have to look and think from honestly, the broker's point of view or a market maker's point of view, they're in the business to make money as well, right? Um, and they want to, a market maker is going to want to, you know, collect your account, <laughs> kill, your, kill your account, collect your money. So as I said earlier, these loan consolidations, people who, you know, are just in it for fun, people who gamble in it, people who aren't real versed in it or real experienced in it, you know, they're going to play the highs and lows of this. Um, some people will over leverage or well, a lot of people will over leverage. And those whipsaws are perfect perfect moves to collect money on both sides so for instance this consolidation a liquidity pool is above this and below this it's above it because people who went short right here play the double top or the in formation right they'll play that and every time it comes up to this top they'll enter in more 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 people who follow this move right here and see that this is making a higher low than this right they'll play that they'll buy they'll buy they'll buy and then before finally you know these wicks <laughs> they're taking them out and these these quick heavy moves like this if you're selling and you're over leveraged from, from entering multiple times over here your stop loss is hit or this is going to take you out from being over leveraged if you're <clears throat> if you're buying down here and you uh, see this move, this is perfectly fine. This move right here is going to warrant you a little bit, especially if you have a trailing stop loss, because it's going to move in profit, but then this is going to kill you. Boom. It's going to either put you back at break even or just barely any profit. So they clear the board both ways before the actual move comes and they put money in, in their pocket. That's how they do it, man. And there's absolutely no way for us to really be prepared or ready for that. Are there any other questions today, guys? I wanted to help make you guys some money, but we haven't been able to make too much today, honestly. Um, but we do have some charts to keep an eye on, though. Ah, Nas 100. Can I see your FIB levels in NAS 100? Yes. Um, NAS 100 was, uh, I didn't do, but I'll show you my FIB levels and stuff and do NAS 100 real quick. You can kind of see S&P, NAS, similar stuff. Doesn't mean they're going to follow each other directly, but very similar stuff. Um, structure, it is that structure. Oh, that's a half point. Holy crap. What is that? Definitely. A half point. So it's stalling out right now. I would still just stay aside on the indices. With it being this, well, I would stay aside. It's just not really, after, like you said, after that whipsaw, guys, it's, it's dead, kind of stagnant. End of the week as well. May not even do anything until London. It's just going to slowly drift i'm not going to enter anything on this one or you or you 30 or um german 30 or s p and my fib settings are this Everything with a check mark is what I use. <laughs> no 
wind is funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, let's see. Welcome, Daniel. Where do you think gold is going to go to? Um, take a look at gold. I don't know. I do know we are long on it. Um, I have this blue line as a reference point for take profit. <laughs> Does it mean it's going to get all the way up there? No. I would focus on collecting, you know, 30, 40 pips or so, getting out. So yeah, these are my reference lines for gold. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. <laughs> all right, guys, I appreciate you all this morning. Um, hopefully you guys are in gold. Took a little L on you, Chef, because of the whipsaw. Um, maybe a little drawdown on another one. I think it might be EU. But other than that, guys, hopefully gold is going to give us some bread this morning. We all need it. It's been a rough week. I will say that. All right, guys. Y'all take care, all right? Have a great day. Mm -hmm.